Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my Hot Topics series. Today we are going to continue our discussion about the moon. In the first class, we looked at an interesting phenomenon and research that's been done on our perception of the moon. But in this hour, I want to turn from our perception of the moon to how the moon has affected our perception. In other words, how we as a culture have been affected by it. So we're going to take a look at some interesting examples from different culture about what the moon means and how it's affected us. And, uh, well, we'll get more into that in just a minute. Okay, first a little bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means when you're not speaking, turn off your microphone so we can keep the classroom quiet. When you are speaking, tune in to the new words that you're learning. Use them actively so that I can correct you and give you feedback. Finally, open up. Open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. Let me say hello to all of you, now that you know who I am. Let's start with Abdullah. Hello, Abdullah. How are you today? Hello. Hi. Hi, Abdullah. Hi. So, how are you? Did you see the previous class that I did this morning? Did you catch the first hour? No, I just heard uh, I just heard your start. Ah, okay, very good. Well, that's all right. Yeah. We're going to we're going to talk about a slightly different thing anyway. Um okay. and where are you from, Abdullah? Uh I am from Saudi Arabia, but I live in Australia. You live in Australia? That's a that's a bit yeah. of a, a bit of a leap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you? Are you? Did you decide to go there for work, or because you wanted a change? No, I am studying now. Oh, you're studying in Australia. Yeah, I came. Okay, I came here to study. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Let's say hello to Alex as well. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm very good. And where are you from, Alex? Uh, I'm from Spain. Whereabouts? Uh, I live in the east in a city named Valencia. Valencia. Okay, very good. Um, if Carmen comes back, she will be your compatriot from Valencia. She's from the same place. I don't know if she'll be back, though. Um, oh, okay. So, here's what we're going to do. In the first hour, we talked about how the moon plays with our perception. This hour, we're going to talk about how the moon affects our culture. And we're going to look at some examples from different cultures around the world. Since neither of you were in the first class, I'm going to give you a quick update. I want to show you something which I think might be interesting. Um, so let me just figure out where I put everything. Hold on a second. Uh, give me just a minute to share my screen with you. Uh, da, 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 da. Where should I start? Uh, I'm going to start here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Take a look at this picture. Do you notice anything unusual about the picture? What What's unusual about the family in the picture? <laughs> uh, they are very tall. They seem it, right? <laughs> yeah. Who is the tallest person? The 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 mother, the son, or the daughter? I think the mother. Looks like it, right? Oh yeah, the first in the left. Would you believe? If, would you believe it if I told you that she is actually the shortest person of the three? Hmm. How? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you another example. Give me a second here. I know this picture is a little bit small, but now you can see it in a more dramatic way. Mm -hmm. 
the two men are roughly the same height, more or less the same height. But the man on the right looks a lot larger. So, yeah. what do you think could account for that? Mm, I think, well, maybe mm, these people are uh, statues, are <laughs> not statues. real. They are real. These are real ah. people. Ah, okay, okay. That's my brother. <laughs> yes, really? Yeah, that's me and my brother. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. They are real. Okay. okay, let's get another theory. They're not statues, so what else could it be? Uh, you can make this. Uh, you can make a lot of tricks with the camera or with the, some programs like Photoshop or. I agree. Like I agree with you about the camera, but I assure you, this is not Photoshop, because this picture is from like 1973. It's definitely not Photoshop, but you're right about the camera. What do you think is going on with the camera? What do you think is happening? Just out of curiosity, how do you think we're achieving that effect with the camera? If you had to create a theory, what would your theory be? What's the trick? Because you mentioned the camera, so what's the camera doing? Mm -hmm. Want to make a guess? I don't know. What about you, Abdullah? Want to make a guess? What do you think the camera is doing? Mm, I'm not sure exactly. Let's see if you can, can you can, can give us his opinion on this. Can you see the two men in the picture, Yuki? Oh, yes, I see. Would you believe me if I told you that they are exactly the same height in reality? I They're know. Exactly? It's, uh, it's the trick. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I have, I have watched the um, documentary series of uh, uh, ne neo graphics channel uh, titled titled uh, Mind Game. Mind Obviously. games, okay. Yes. No, uh, I don't know it. Yeah, this this is uh, contributed uh, to this problem. Problem, so uh, problem of our our uh, function of our, um, our our brain and perception. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a perceptual problem, and so I suppose that uh, this this room is uh, distorted. Uh, in reality, and if you see uh, through the hole into the room, uh, it it seems it, it looks like two one big man and one small man but, uh, in the room. But in reality, wow. is uh, <laughs> it is <laughs> designed for that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, Adi, this is a picture which is exactly like what you described with the Parthenon. Remember your, your example about yes. Greek architecture? Yeah. So, so if you look at this picture, can you figure out the distortion that Yuki was mentioning? Can you figure out where the distortion is? Um, I've just joined, so I didn't the, the is in... The but the it's, is it's in, exactly uh, like yes, what yes. you're talking about with the, with the Parthenon. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, so that's right. the distortion is on the left or, or on the right on the on the man that is really uh, looks bigger, but actually it's the room is smaller. I mean, how do I put it in? in how do I talk about it? talk about the shape of the room? Is yeah, the room yeah. square? Is there, it's not square. It's, it's uh, not like um, tra trapezium. Can I say that trapezium? Uh, yeah, we say uh, trapezoid. 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 Yeah, the room trapezoid. is actually trapezoid at the right side. That's it. I think you're right. So let's see if I scroll. By the way, for those of you just joining us, we're talking about an amazing phenomenon in nature, which is still not explained. Most people, if not all people, 
when you look at the moon on the horizon, it looks big. And when you look at the moon high up, what we call the zenith, high up in the sky, it looks small. But in reality, it's exactly the same size. And people have been trying to understand for three millennia why this is the case. This room is probably the answer. Probably. We'll see. But let, let's go back to what Adi was saying. You said it's a trapezoid. So I have a diagram in one of these pictures. Um, here's one diagram. It's a little small, but you can, you can see more or less what's going on. It's a trapezoid shape. And I think somewhere there's, a, there's an overhead picture where you can really see the illusion. Uh, hang on just a second. I think there's a, there's a picture looking down on the room, too. Uh, you can't really see it here. Hold on. There's one there. It's not too big. Let me see if I can find a better one. Uh. <laughs> I, I can't find a better one, but I like this one the most. <laughs> hmm. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up and my cat is bigger than me and he wants he doesn't want to be fed he wants to eat me uh, okay well here's another diagram anyway so you can see that trapezoid shape so you're absolutely right not only is it a trapezoid but the right side is elevated and the ceiling is low so it's a trapezoid but it's a three-dimensional trapezoid whatever you would call that and say so here's another picture which is a little easier to see. So as Yuki said, if you look through the hole in the wall or you look through the, 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 the hole, the aperture of a camera, it gives the illusion that everything is straight lines, but in fact it isn't. How do you think that relates to our moon illusion from before? Um, uh, here's another great example called the Ponzo illusion. I don't know if I can make this bigger or not. Let me see if I can make this picture a little bit bigger in Wikipedia. Uh, ah, it's a little bit small. Anyway, this is a very famous illusion, the Ponzo illusion. You have to look at that picture and you decide which of the rails is longer and which is shorter. And everyone probably thinks that the one in the front is shorter, but they're the same size, right? So it has to do with what's around, what's surrounding the, uh, the object in question. So earlier we talked about the moon. How do you think this relates to the, mu the moon illusion? I think uh, uh, in, comparison, uh, in comparison with, uh, with this room, uh, I, I, I think uh, or, uh, or why the moon on the horizon looks bigger uh, than than day daytime moon uh, day the, the moon uh, on the on the, At the zenith zenith is the uh, word zenith, yes zenith. because uh, I think we we can compare the uh, room's structure in this in in that picture with uh, the ho horizon. So, exactly. So we can compare the maybe some figures, some maybe mount mountains or building with 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 the moon or when the moon uh, next to the horizon. But yeah, that's the idea, right? Yeah. We 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 can't we can't have anything to compare with the moon, so it looks smaller. It's, it's strange but true. That's the theory. And, and there's a good summary in Wikipedia. So without going back to our article, um, there's a good summary here called uh, the apparent distance hypothesis. This was the scientist we were reading about. Remember Kaufman that we were reading about in the last hour? Yes. OK, this is his theory. So, but it's but this is a better summary. The article is maybe a little too difficult. It's kind of uh, too advanced. But this one is a little bit easier to understand. So I want to just let's just read this part about Kaufman's experiment and see if it's more or less clear. Let me make it just a little bigger for you. Okay, and then we're going to move on 
to talking about the moon and perception, but cultural perceptions, not physical perceptions. Okay? So, can I get a reader for this paragraph here? Let me see if I can just get it into the, make it a little bit bigger for you. See, who's out there? Who's quiet? Oh, look, we've got Manuel. Hello, Manuel. Didn't see you come in. Hello, Manuel. Manuel, are you there? Manuel Eduardo Botia. Uh-oh, I don't hear Manuel. Igor, you've been kind of quiet. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. Does the moon look bigger to you at the horizon or way up in the pass. sky? It does. Good. Well, then, you, then you can stay. I have a theory about it. It's yeah. like when you look at the horizon, yeah. uh, you always perceive the horizon to be really far, far away. Right. And um, if you look at the uh, moon that is at the zenith, you don't really see any background there. You only right. see you only see you know, sky, and you have no idea how far from you it is. Okay, I, I, the theory is fine, but if you're saying the moon, we can no, we can see uh, it as far away because it's on the horizon. Shouldn't it look smaller to us? No, no, no. You, uh, let, let me think about it. Uh, how to <laughs> it. Uh, you, uh, well, uh, the picture you saw, uh, you're showing us. Right. Of the, like, of the, the railroad For track. example, things around it. Like uh, our mind, it adjusts uh, the size of our, of our thing. You know, like, <laughs> if you look at a really small car, you know it, it is a small car. And it's uh, mm -hmm. like 50 feet away from you. And about 100 feet away from you, you will see a car that is really big, you know? But like, uh, the like actual this, image would like this, for example, for your eyes would be like the car that is in at the distance is smaller, but you will know automatically that the car uh, at the farther distance is bigger than it, than the car there. Uh, <laughs> distance that is smaller to you. So it's a it's a it's the rel the the size is relative based on what surrounds it. Yes, it's like uh, when you s when there is a horizon, you see a real background there. And Absolutely. You might you, you mind? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, here's an example, Igor. I think this is what you're saying. Look at look at the two center circles, right? If you take a look at the two center circles. So, in this case. Which circle looks bigger, the one on the top or the one on the bottom? Well, uh, it looks <laughs> like the circles at the bottom are smaller, for sure. The, the circles at the bottom are smaller, but what about the one in the middle? Uh, the one in the middle? I think Compared to the one there. in the middle above? They look the same. At least to you? To me, the one, the one... Oh, I'm getting a lot of echo, by the way. Uh, make sure that you're wearing headphones or something. Someone's giving me echo. Um, the one on the bottom looks bigger to me than the one on the top, referring to the center circle. Because it's... The same to me. <laughs> that's because you are not fooled by illusion, Igor. You see right through it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, that's a good theory, and it's, and it's not a bad way to, to summarize the relative hypothesis theory. Uh, so, nope, that's not the right one. I'm sorry. Nope, nope, nope. The relative hypothesis theory is when the context makes the size look relative. But first, I want to talk about the apparent distance hypothesis. That's the one I was wanted to mention. So this is the one from the article we read in the first hour. And maybe we could just get a little summary so, Igor, now you've spoken. You can't speak anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't smoke. You can speak, but, but we're going we're gonna to give another, uh, someone else a chance to read here. Ishmael, you've been quiet. 
Are you there? Uh, hi, John. I am here. Fantastic. I'm listening to you. I want you to read this little summary of the experiment by Kaufman. I know you weren't in the first class, but we were reading an article about Kaufman. Um, so maybe you could just read this short summary for us so we could see the apparent distance hypothesis. Can you do that one for us? Yes. Go for it. Extensive experiments in 1962 by Kaufman and Rack show that a crucial causative factor in the illusion is a change in the pattern of cues to distance. See Ponzo illusion, depth perception, linear perspective, texture gradient. That's the one I showed you uh, before, the one with the railroad tracks that you Which saw. The one with the railroad tracks, where you have the two bars, one looks short, one yes. looks long. Um, it Text was... Text or Ponzo illusion? Ponzo, the Ponzo oh. illusion, this one. Okay, yes. This was uh, discovered by an Italian psychologist named Ponzo, so they named it after him. The horizon, the horizon moon is perceived to be at the end of a stretch of terrain receding into the distance, accompanied by distant trees, buildings, and so forth, all of which indicate that it must be a long way away, while these cues are absent from the zenith moon. Experiments by many other researchers have found the same result, namely, when pictorial cues to a great distance are subtracted from the vista of the large-looking horizon moon, it looks smaller. When pictorial cues to an increased distance are added into the vista of the zenith moon, it appears larger. Just one word on pronunciation. Not cues, but cue, cues. Cues. That's it. Cues. Q in this key in this case, it's not Q like stand in Q, like a waiting line. It's Q as in well, we could also use the word clue, some kind of evidence, something, some evidence in the picture that gives you a frame of reference. So this is a say again? Feedback maybe. Like yes, something like that. It's it's not exactly feedback, but something similar. I mean, I guess a good synonym for me would be evidence or some detail that gives you just enough information you need to judge the distance. It's a little bit hard to define the word Q, but in this case, it's like that. The detail you need to make a judgment. So this is a little different than what Igor was saying. Um, in this case, but, but it's the same as the beginning of what Igor was saying. Igor, you were saying when there's nothing in the background, we can't judge how far away it is. And this theory is when you take away all the details, like you said, we can't judge how far away it is, and we automatically perceive it as smaller. The, that's this particular theory. Well, there's, a, there's another theory that what's around it gives it a relative size. So it's it's uh, that's why when we looked at the Ponzo theory here, that rail that has less visual cues around it appears to be smaller, when in fact it's not. If that makes sense. Make sense? Yes. No. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> so. That was just kind of a recap of the first hour and really the main point of, of, the, of, the, of the research. But I want to talk a little more broadly about perception, this time cultural perception. So we're switching topics a little bit. Um, but what I want to do is start off with how the moon has shaped culture. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you a little slideshow. Uh, and you tell me if you can recognize some of this stuff, 
and if it's the same in your culture, this is, this is taken from different cultures, but it's mostly American, most of it. A cultural history of the moon. I, I know it's a little hard to see. I don't know if I can make that bigger, but I don't know. Let me see if I can just blow it up just a bit. Hold on. Yeah, okay. I can make it just a little bigger. Um, both the moon and the sun are core elements of the world's ancient religions. In the Islamic world, the appearance of the lunar crescent was tr was trumpeted to the people. <clears throat> so we're going to read an article, a very short article, but an interesting one, about the cultural influence of the moon. Um, let's see. Who knows about Islam out there? Me? John? I thought so. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? This idea of the crescent moon. So you can see in the horizon there's a little crescent moon. And on the flag of some uh, Muslim countries you have a crescent moon. Does that mean something in the Quran? Uh, in, at the early age of Islam uh, it was used a uh, moon calendar. John ah, moon okay. Every, every uh, religious uh, operation are designed by the uh, lunar uh, movement and uh, lunar uh, shape. Right, right. For example, we are going to fast uh, according to moon shape. When we saw a uh, crescent uh, shape of moon mm -hmm. in the sky, we start to uh, fast. On, on Ramadan. Right. And, and is that the same today as well? Yes. Uh, oh. I, actually, uh, it used some uh, scientific methods uh, today to, mm. to match the, the time, but uh, there are some uh, differences between countries. For example, uh, it changed one day from country to country. We start uh, before one day uh, from Iran to fast on uh, Ramadan. Uh, some so, countries are using the uh, old method and people uh, look in the sky and when they saw the crescent of the moon yeah, and they say it is okay. Let's start to uh, fast. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and is there is there is there a particular reason why the crescent moon begins Ramadan? Is there some connection? Because I don't know anything about Islam. I'm just curious. Actually, is it the connection is uh, why we are, we are using the. Uh, the moon calendar, actually in my country we use a uh, lunar calendar, but mm -hmm. in some uh, Islamic country uh, was used a uh, lunar calendar and uh, they behave according to moon uh, movement and uh, shape. Phases, we, we like to say phases for the moon shape. Phases, yes. right. <clears throat> so it's really just a, a one way of organizing a culture, in other words, around the phases of the moon. And maybe in today's world, we're just disconnected from this because now it could be night or day. <laughs> You're working, you know, 24 hours a day, I guess. So and it's just uh, a kind of a disconnection from nature today. And John, for example, according to Quran, we should uh, pray five times a day, and this uh, praying time is very important. You cannot uh, generally before the time or after the time. Mm -hmm. You should you should uh, pray ac according to time, and this time is. Uh, uh, 
is a calendar, and this calendar is according to the moon, uh, phase and movements. Um, and you have to face the sun when you're praying, right? What are you facing? Did you no, always have to face? We are facing uh, the Kaaba when we uh, when many people uh, are pilgrimage. Ah, oh, right, Saudi Arabia in in to Mecca. Mecca. To Mecca. Yes. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. So no matter where you are in the world, you have to face in the direction of Mecca. Is that it? Yes. Uh, ah, okay. Which is a problem there because are some, there are some people who pray to the sun. Uh, it's a different religion, I think. It is ah okay. So that's a problem because what if you're on the other side of the earth from Saudi Arabia? You'd have to pray looking down at the ground. <laughs> You'd be closest, going directly across, right? Maybe not. I don't. I don't know how this works. Um, okay, that's really interesting because I often wondered why the crescent moon was like on the flags of some of those countries, and uh, it's really interesting because it's like a whole part of our culture which is kind of lost today. I mean, that's what I find interesting. One thing I find interesting. But we're not done there. We've got a few of these slides to look at. Let me just see if I can turn this. Maybe I can ask you each to read one of the captions. Um, some of these are better than others. I don't know, can you read this all right? Um, Alex, do you think you can read the caption here for us? Mm -hmm. The caption? Yeah. The caption is the text on the right side. Oh, okay. Uh, moon plus boots. Moon, boot? Uh, so this is a term. They're, they're giving you a new term. Moonwood. Something that you might not have heard of before. Moonwood. Mm -hmm. Uh, do trees feel the moon's influence in some areas of Central Europe? Lumbar was cut exclusively in the winter and only according to certain rules. Moon boot. Lumbar cut during a certain lunar phase, typically before the new moon. Was said to have unique properties such as resistance to weather, weathering or suitability for use as cook where in a fireplace. Moon wood. And now you know. The next time you want to cook, you better use moon wood, Alex. Moon wood. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think that has any validity? Uh, I haven't uh, get the meaning exactly. Oh, of which? <laughs> of the whole paragraph. Take a look here. Uh, when was the lumber cut, Alex? When is the lumber cut in this example? Lumber is the trees, right? When did they cut the trees? Uh, in the winter. In the winter. During the day or at night? Uh, during uh, night, in a specific exactly. lunar phase. Exactly. And what is the change that occurs in the wood according to the the folklore? What's the change? Okay, so uh, this paragraph says that if you cut the wood of the trees uh, from the trees uh, after no before the new moon, uh, this wood is better to. Mm, to to burn, maybe to burn or maybe to to uh, use for construction, because it says oh, okay. resistance to weathering. Ah, uh -huh. right. So weathering means that it won't be affected by the rain and the sun. It won't wear out, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a belief. Do you think there's any truth to that, Alex? Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes uh, the ancient people believed these kind of things, uh, but uh, by the time some scientists uh, 
may study these uh, these events and they uh, may have found some reason some uh, not may have found but they 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 may find may find right because it's find. not about not about the past you mean in general which is yeah. may find oh, yeah they may find that there's some truth to it i mean why would people keep doing it if there wasn't some element of truth it makes sense mm -hmm. well i can't i can't tell you the answer here i'm a little bit suspicious <laughs> i don't know i'm not convinced but you never know. Maybe there is. Maybe there is a reason. Here's another one. Uh, Daniel, can you take this one for us? Daniel, you out there? Because I can't hear you. Uh, I can't hear Daniel. Let's go to. Um, what about Manuel? I haven't heard from you today. Are you there, Manuel? Hello, Manuel? Hello, hello? Uh, hello? I can't hear. Ah, there's Daniel back. Hello, Daniel. Okay. <clears throat> Moon music. Moon music. Classical music offers various reference to Moonlight. The sweet Bergamasque, among the most famous piano compositions by Claude Debussy. 1862, 1918. Two, 19, two, 1918. Two. That little, that little uh, hyphen is a two. 1862. Two. two. 19, ah, okay, okay, okay. 1892 to 1998. 1998. Does not say 1998. 1998. 19. 1918. 18. <laughs> 1918. There you go. Sorry. Good. <laughs> Includes a uh, movement known as Claire de Lune, Claire de Lune, Moon mm -hmm. Knight, which was probably named for the poem by the same title by Paul Berlain, 1844. 1894. 1844 to, to 1894. Right. Everyone probably knows the the Claire de Lune, which is that. Don't 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 don't. That's my impression of the Claire de Lune. Do you like it? I used to play it on piano. <laughs> oh, sing it for us. You can do a better job. No, no. Come on, Daniel. Sing I it used for to us. play on piano. I know, but no. you can sing it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Claire de Lune, which literally is the clear of the moon, which is another way of saying the light of the moon. So, moonlight. All right. So, we've got moon wood. We've got moon music. I don't know about any of you, but I find this all kind of fascinating. I hope it's interesting. And we've got one for Yuki. Look at this one, Yuki. Yes, it, it's a Japanese ukiyo-e uh, uh, print picture. Yeah? Japanese moon art. Uh, prostitute stroll, strolling by moonlight. An illustration from Tsukioka Yashio, Yashitoshi. Tsukioka Yashitoshi's uh, 100 aspects of, of the moon. So, what can you tell us about this kind of painting? Yes, it looks it looks very traditional. Yes, it is a famous. Uh, um, it is called ukiyo-e. Ukiyo-e. Yes, ukiyo-e is a uh, uh, Japanese print. Uh, it is uh, not painted. It it is printed. Uh, okay. In the medieval medieval in the medieval Japan, uh, in the time in the period of Edo. Uh, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, uh, such a culture, such a painting tradition of ukiyo-e occurred. Uh, usually, it is printed, and it it is it was it have been it had been sell, sold uh, to public. 
so people people could buy uh, in the shops uh, such a piece of paintings. Uh, mm -hmm. It it of, often a uh, beautiful woman and kabuki stars uh, had has been painted. Uh, kabuki? Yes, kab do you know kabuki? Kabuki. I know, but maybe not everyone. So it's like a theater, right? Kabuki, yes, traditional Japanese theater. Uh, it is very specific, um, very um, very exaggerated action, and peop, uh, and it is um, uh, uh, all actors have a very um, strong strong uh, makeup. So. Uh, so. In the in the period of Edo, uh, kabuki became a uh, very f famous, popular, uh, and but everyone couldn't everyone couldn't go to theater. They 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 um, they tried to buy uh, such a print uh, uh, and collect it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And so. does the moon have some special significance? Is this I picture think, yes. special in some way? I, uh, it's a spe specific feature of Japanese art. Uh, confusion um, of uh, human, a uh, fusion of um, person, mm -hmm. portrait, and, and natural uh, phenomenon. It's a specific feature of Japanese art. So there you can, um, front line, uh, you can see the uh, um, woman. Not, yeah. not, the, not the front line. In the foreground. Ah, for, the foreground. In the foreground. In the foreground, you can see the beautiful woman uh, wearing kimono, Japanese traditional uh, clothing kimono. And in the background, you can see the uh, river and maybe it's a uh, plant. Yeah. And uh -huh. on, 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 her, on above, you can see moon. So, so it's like the figure and a natural phenomenon yes. together. Is that like and a, a also style? we can we can know it. It is uh, depicted uh, uh, in the season of uh, in the season of uh, autumn uh, because moon in Japan uh, autumn moon is a very uh, people enjoy to uh, to see moon in, in autumn. Um, so, so because uh, autumn uh, sky is often clear, we can see clearly uh, moon. So and and and, uh, and and temperature is not so hot. It is not so hot. It is not cold. It is very pleasant to night to enjoy uh, moon. Uh, eating some <laughs> sweets, so <laughs> it's a traditional uh, way of uh, spending uh, night time in in for Japanese to in, in autumn. Well, I have a theory about this about this print. I have a yeah. theory. Um, the theory is that the character of the prostitute is related to the cultural idea of the moon. I think I think there's a symbol going on here. The reason I say that is because um, I actually want to show you a part of the article where they talk about this, that people have preconceived ideas or have always had preconceived ideas about how the moon affects personality. And there's a really interesting part of the article we should look at, actually. Maybe we ought to turn to the reading because it's just it's, it's like one page. It's really short. Um, but I have a feeling, we'll come back to this in a minute, that somehow there's, uh, well, where's the article? Sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Somehow, whatever the characteristic is, whatever the moon represents, maybe is, uh, is meant to bring out the feature in the figure of the prostitute in some way. Maybe it's this mystery or serenity or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I think it has something to do with that. Just a feeling. I could be wrong, of course. But here's why I say that. Let's take a look at this short article. This is about a book, a very interesting book, but we don't have time to read the book, so we can just kind of read about the book. Exploring our relationship with the lonely moon.
and you'll see why I'm talking about the moon and personality in just a minute. So let's get a reader here. Um, Adi, can you start us off this first two paragraphs? Can you start us off here? Yes, sir. Go for it. Sir, don't call me sir. Are you crazy? <laughs> the moon <laughs> is the moon is Earth only satellite, a quarter of its size, moving around our home planet in cold and lifeless isolation. Isolation. In an orbit, isolation in an orbit that increased in inch and a half a year. A brief history, it's filled with lunar factoids like fact this. Factoids. Little facts are factoids. Little facts. It's filled with, okay. It's filled with lunar it's like this. How the moon from four and a half billion years ago. Probably um, when a Mars-sized body collided Collided? Earth and through. Collided with Earth and threw off a disk of hell that eventually coalesced it to an Good. orbit partner. How that we call the dark side is not actually dark. And however, the centuries people invent, invented telescope and other instruments to view the moon and what they saw. So this is just a little bit about one part of the book, which is these facts about the moon. But then we get into culture, which is the interesting part. Um, can I get another reader? Maybe we could have, uh, is that Sue or Hannah? Because I'm seeing two different names there. <laughs> Hello. Just call me Hannah. Hello, Hannah. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Very good. Yeah. So, um, so we're continuing our discussion of the moon and we're moving into the culture of the moon. Do you think you okay. could take this paragraph for us, Hannah? Of course. Go for <laughs> it. But the book and its wide variety of, of illustrations from classical texts, science fictions and other sources describes not just the history of the Celestial Good. body, but the ways it inspired the human imagination to take flight, uh, field as Proust. Put Proust, it. the the Proust. French the French writer Proust. Okay. <laughs> By the ancient unalterable splendor of a moon, cruelly and mystery, mysteriously serene. Serene. Do you know what serene means? No. Is that clear? <laughs> serene is the opposite of. Someone help her out. It's always good to look at opposites. So you've got serene, and what would be the opposite of serene? Clear. Well, not exactly clear because maybe. Depends on how you mean it. <laughs> maybe. I think I think of serene like more like calm, because you think of like a serene landscape where nothing's really happening and there's no bad weather or something like that. Okay. Also, think, you, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think I understand now. Well, we'll find out because I'm going to have you use it in a sentence. <laughs> when might you feel serene, Hannah? What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let me give you let me give you an example. Because we've got serene, you know, if you're in you take the Alcoholics Anonymous oath, it's the oath of serenity. Grant me serenity. You see that in the movies all the time. So it's like peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful. Yep. Yeah. So oh. when might you feel serene? When might you feel peaceful? I don't know your question. <laughs> when? When, um, when I have personal times, of course. Okay, when you've got time to yourself. 
it's not time. Yeah, right. Yeah? Okay. So when I have time to myself, I feel serene. I'm not stressed out. Exactly. That's it. Okay, so let's get into some of these. By the way, those pictures that it mentioned, we were just looking at those pictures from the book. That was the slideshow that I was showing you at the beginning of class, some of those illustrations. Um, let's see. Shadow, could you take this next one? This is a little bit about the author. Yes, sir. Um, the author, Pan Perner, is the Berlin based writer, one of the one of whose previous books pairs in a history of human your sign, your scene? Or sign, I guess. Or sign relations. As with the bear. What fascinate what fa what fascinates him here is the relationship between people and and his job subject. So we learn from example that old clock shows the faces of the moon as well as the time because before electricity people relied on moonlight to travel in the evening and that people who don't keep track of the moon the moon influence on tides can get into trouble as Julius Caesar did when Roman ignorance of English tides left poets High and dry in the Roman invasion of Britain. High and dry. <laughs> so what happened to the boats? If they're high and dry, what happened? Did Rome have an easy time invading England? No. Yeah, I had some trouble. High and dry. So as if they were, you know, left on the beach those tide had gone out and they weren't aware of the tide so the boats weren't able to go out to sea. I think that's what they're getting at there. So that's a little bit about uh, ancient times. Look at this one. We've got two others here actually. Uh, who hasn't read? Who's out there? Did everyone read already? Who's next? I haven't read it. Maybe. Go for it. Okay. Uh, we, also, we also learned that Chakchi shamans in Siberia sought to achieve magical powers by exposing themselves naked to moonlight and among the Az Aztecs the dark to the moon was thought to bring death. In other cultures the moon that most obviously changeable of celestial 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 objects become a symbol of trans, 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 transience and re, rebirth. In some so, social, social, societies, uh, in some society, <laughs> the moon is thought to have the power to make people crazy, lunatic, loony, or moonstruck, or induce sleepwalking, once known as a and the lunatism. Lunatism means sleepwalking. Who knew? Right, Yuki? Who knew? <laughs> now we know. I, I, I knew that Luna was moon. I knew that lunatic was someone who was crazy, like they're being affected by the moon. But I didn't know that sleepwalking was originally called lunatism. Like you're being affected by the moon like a magnet, and you rise up out of your bed unconscious and start walking around. So, learn something new every day. <laughs> um, I think everyone's read except Manuel, but Manuel, I can't hear you, so I don't know if your mic is working. If it is, say a quick hello. Going once, going twice. Okay, I think we're back to Alex. Yes. Okay. Um, every faith and culture, it seems, kept an eye on the moon, setting Passover, Easter, Ramadan, Tet, and other observance according to the lunar calendar. The observances, Buddha, sorry, observances, four syllables. Observances. Good. According to the lunar calendar, the Buddha was supposed to have achieved enlightenment by the light of the full moon 
and as belief in a moon goddess faded with the advent of Christianity. Mr. Brunel tells us Mary became associated with the moon. That's right. So, in pagan times you had a moon goddess, but as Christianity took over, uh, Mary, I guess that's the mother of Jesus, is associated with the moon. I think that's the Mary they're talking about. Because there's like three Marys, so I'm not sure which one they mean, but I guess they mean the mother. Um, okay, well, we're actually almost at the bottom of the article, so I think we're back to Daniel. Can you take this one? <clears throat> okay. By the 70th century, people were imagining trips to the moon and encounters with lunar inhabitants who Mr. Brunner tell us are hardly ever imagined as inferior, ill nature or threatening. Perhaps the most famous work in the genre is Jules in the genre. In the genre. In the genre gen is Jules Verne From the Earth to the Moon, which was published in Paris in eighteen sixty five and which accurately predicted not only that people from the United States could be the first to set foot on the moon, but also, among other details, that the craft carrying them would be launched from Florida, splashed down in the Pacific, and uh, be rescued by the United States Navy. NASA's, we say NASA's, NASA's, NASA's Apollo program, helped make Bernard popular again, Mr. Bernard Wright. That's right. And Ishmael, let's finish the article this last little bit here. Can you take that for us? Can you finish it up for us, Ishmael? Yes, John. Go for it. Today, lunar exploration is on the back burner, although India sent a spacecraft Chandrayaan 1 to the Chandrian. moon. Chandrayaan, I think. Chandrayaan. Chandrayaan 1 to the moon in 2008. The craft carried a verse from the Rig Veda, a collection of sacred texts. Oh, moon, we should be able to know you through our intellect. You enlighten us through the right path. <laughs> you enlighten us through the right path. So, that last line seems to be kind of significant. In all the things we've seen, um, you know, somehow the moon has to do with affecting our behavior and our psychology in the mysterious way that it seems to affect the tides. So, this article is a little bit old. Uh, some things have happened since. Um, What's happened recently in moon news? Because this was in 2010. But China did something with the moon, right? Not too long ago. Am I right? Who's out there in China? Anyone? No one? Wait a second. Hannah, you're out there in China, aren't you? <laughs> I'm in Taiwan, not China. You're where? Taiwan? Yeah. Uh, but the broadcast was in Chinese. Wasn't there, uh, did China send a probe to the moon uh, like a, what was it, like a year ago? I'm, I'm not really sure because I don't read uh, news about China very often. Well, I understand <laughs> that. But, but it was such an international thing, even, even uh, we saw it in the West. Uh, I forgot the name of it too, I, I don't remember. Ago. Was it a year ago? Yeah, something like that. And there was something else which you probably didn't read about, or at least might not have heard of. Did you hear about uh, the uh, what was the thing that uh, the United States did? They crashed a spaceship into the moon. Did you hear about that one? The Mars. No, no, no. Before that, it was they crashed. They deliberately crashed a spaceship into the moon. And it wasn't really, it wasn't really in the media for some strange reason. And it was a little bit mysterious. 
uh, they crashed the ship on the dark side of the moon. And it, and it, did anyone hear about this, or am I no. am I the only one? <laughs> it, it didn't publicize. It, it wasn't. <clears throat> it wasn't publicized. So there's lots of conspiracy theories about it. Uh, this was a little bit longer ago. Um, uh, I don't remember now. Anyway, more than a year ago, uh, maybe two years ago. I can't remember. They crashed a ship into the dark side of, the, or a satellite or something, whatever they had floating around the moon. They crashed it. They let it fall into the dark side of the moon. And the the explanation was that they wanted to see if there was water on the moon. And that the best way they could see it is by allowing some satellite that was, you know, going to fail and, you know, run out of power or whatever. Let it crash in the moon and then try to measure the debris that was kicked up into the atmosphere and try to test if there was water under the surface. That was the theory anyway. But it's kind of mysterious. <laughs> I think I think USA uh, do everything secretly. Yeah, maybe they were maybe they were saving us from the the moon people. I don't know. So, does the moon have any special significance in Taiwan? Is it part of the culture? Mm, yeah. If we we have a taboo, uh, if you point at the moon. Uh, it means the moon will will slice your ears. <laughs> <laughs> the moon will slice your ears. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty rough. <laughs> and so, it, is is that to teach you not to point at things? Mm, perhaps I think. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, I'd like to hear from, from all of you if there's something in your culture about the moon. I'd like to hear what the unique aspects of moon culture are. Um, so, for example, I don't know. Who else is out there? We've got Turkish. We've got Saudi. We've got a couple of Spaniards. We've got a Russo-Japanese. <laughs> we've got an Adi. That's an Indonesian. What about in Indonesia, Adi? You said that the Moon Festival, the 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 Chinese holiday, is celebrated in, in Indonesia too. Yeah, uh, for there is mm, multicultural in Indonesia. There is Chinese for lunar lunar festivals, a Bali for Bali that which the festival is almost every month, every full month. The, and the other one is um, there is festival for. Um, for Buddhist festival, full moon too. So, I, I, it's it's related to religion and to the calendar. That's the all. So, that's the culture in here. And and what is the, like, what's the celebration? What's the moon festival? Because that's the one I've heard of. But what's it about? Um, for Bali, it's all about the. It's because it's uh, they believe that at the full moon it's the best best day to purifying ourselves because their god is praying on the full moon for for Bali. So to to purify yourself is that right? Yes. Huh. Yes, to purify. It's not mm, for but uh, for Hindu Hindu people. Hmm. Huh. And so, so you is there fasting too, like like in like in Ramadan, as as uh, Ishma was saying. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, we are also fasting too for Muslim because it's very diverse country right here. So we have at least four or three three festival of festival moons. Yes, in different uh, in different uh, cities. So if you like the moon, you should go to Indonesia. That's the moral of the yeah. story. You got three different ways to celebrate the moon. Okay, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Is there anything lunar happening out there in Spain? Just out of curiosity. Is there any mythology about it? I I, I haven't. I'm I'm trying to think here in Portugal. It's kind of more about like folk tales and things like that. So what about in Spain? Is there anything particular in the culture? 
Is there a Salamancan moon celebration moon, thing? Full, full moon, crazy people. <laughs> full moon, crazy people? Same in Valencia? Full moon, crazy people in it's Valencia? My, it's, it's my point of view. <laughs> Could yes. be. But, <laughs> yes. Well, people, people say that uh, the moon um, make people more emotional, uh, eat um, makes you to get out your instinct, like the werewolves in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard about it. So you're less inhibited, maybe. Yes. Yeah, less inhibited. Mm. Yes. Uh, it helps you to externalize your. Uh, Oh, to the, the, purge, the, the, to purge your emotions. Yes. Got it. Yeah, your, your emotions. That's it, to purge, get the it emotions. out. Yes, the emotions you uh, don't usually get out in the day. Got it, got it. So everything that you keep pent up inside of you, you can somehow get it out by turning in into a, to a werewolf in Valencia. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. More or less. More or less. Anything we should know about in Saudi culture, Shadow? Just out of curiosity? Sorry, teacher. Can you repeat? Is there anything moon or lunar related in Saudi culture? Yeah, it's about religion. The same with uh, Ismail and... Uh, Oh, they said. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a religious connection. I didn't really understand. Uh, I mean, is it something having to do? I mean, is it is is it just because the calendar was a lunar calendar, or is there something about the moon that helps you purify yourself the way Adi was talking about? Um, it we are have a special calendar. It's about uh, as you said, lunar cal calendar. Uh, and uh, when the mon when the moon, we usually go outside before Ramadan to to watch the moon. If it's uh, if we see the crescent, I think its name is crescent. If we see the crescent? the moon crescent, yeah, it's become crescent. We start fasting the next day. If we don't see it, we don't fast. It's it's like that and. Even every celebration, we just watch the moon. If it's appear, the crescent. Because of that, you used to see that Muslims used to use the crescent as a sign for them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, what does the crescent mean? <laughs> That's the part that I'm struggling with. Is it just because... Is it, is it the crescent moon because it's going to go completely dark? And then it's before the next new moon. It's, it's the beginning of the month. It's the beginning uh, of the month. Oh, okay, that's it. Mhm. Mm so it, it so it's like marking a new cycle. Yes. Uh, and even in the, in the middle of the month, it's fourteen, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, these three days, the moon it's become uh, it's become full. I mean, it's. Not full, yeah. Yeah, the full moon. The full moon. Yeah, it's the middle of the month. So people usually fast every month in the, these three days. It's it's not like uh, something that have to do it. It you have the option. Right, right, right. Wow, it's a lot of fasting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well. I hope that we've learned a little bit about the moon in culture uh, and a little bit about lunar vocabulary. I learned something new. I learned that lunacy really means sleepwalking. That was new for me. Hope you learned something. Um, we're going to have to stop here. So um, don't be a lunatic. I don't know. I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> uh, have a moon cake in the moon festival, and there you go. So come back every Friday for a different hot topic. I'm going to focus on 
strange and unusual things or cultural things or topical things in the news. And I thought this today would, today would be a good one because it's a little bit different and it might be something we could all relate to. So have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you Monday morning for pronunciation at 10 GMT, 9 GMT. Bye for now, have everyone. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Hope to see you soon. Sí. <laughs>